LLC, Pest Geek Podcast, Living the Wildlife Podcast, Stephen M. Van Tassel, or their or his affiliates are not responsible for followers' use of the information provided here. Hi everyone, Stephen Van Tassel here, Wildlife Control Consultant, bringing you another episode of Living the Wildlife as part of the Pest Geek Podcast family. Glad to have you on board. I hope you've had a great week. Uh, today is Friday Veterans Day. Do take a few moments, if you would, and think about the veterans who have uh, served this country and have sacrificed. So even though Veterans Day is for all veterans, I believe Memorial Day is for those that have that have died in, uh, in battle, uh, Veterans Day is certainly something we need to uh, honor here in the United States. So... Do take a few moments, if you would as well, to sign up for the podcast. Make sure you ring the bell and join our particular group. Uh, I do post on Rumble as well. You can re-get that at Wildlife Control Consultant, Wildlife Control Consultant, and you can sign up there as well uh, to get my podcast there, or you can get it through iTunes. Uh, So Pest Geek Podcast posts there through iTunes. And of course, through the Pest Geek podcast site, and then I post uh, my presentations up on Rumble. Uh, so you won't get, uh, I, will, I will only be posting the vertebrate portion. So uh, with Pest Geek podcast, of course, you're going to get all of the material, both the insect and the vertebrate side of things, because of uh, Franklin's work, of course, with the insect side, and I do primarily the vertebrate side. All right, well, enough of all that. So... Let's talk about what I wanted to talk about today, which was images. I am passionate about images, and I think it is so important for us to have a ways to... I, I Let me back up. I wish that more wildlife control operators took photos. Uh, those of you listening to the podcast, I am always looking to purchase use rights of photos rather than ownership rights. And so what is the difference to that? So let's talk about a little bit about copyright side of things. So copyright, when you take a photograph, you own that photograph. That photograph is yours. That's part of your creative project. So that becomes your property. You can sell the ownership of that property to someone else, which means that you could only use it if you got the new owner's permission. Think of it like a piece of land. If you owned land, you can sell the land, and if you sold the land to someone else, you would no longer own the land, and you would need permission from the landowner to use that land if you wanted to. Now, use rights is your sort of like a... A renter, or perhaps a better analogy would be sort of like purchasing a record or a song in iTunes where you don't own that particular song, but you have purchased the rights to use that song. For example, I have a cell phone here and I have music on my cell phone. And I that I've purchased through an online store, but I don't own the song, I own the right to listen to the song. That's use rights. In other words, I can't sell that song and get royalties from it because it's not mine any more than you can take an album that someone else produced and sell it to someone and and get and have it played on the radio and you get the royalties. That's just not how it works. Now you can sell the actual phonograph, I mean, not the phonograph, but the uh, the disc, for example, the record. But that per- just means that person now is able to listen to the song, but they don't own any more than you owned when you sold it. So what that all means is, is that if I buy the use rights of a photo, let's say you take a photo of a raccoon, and I like it, I am purchasing the ability to use that particular image for my for my uses but i can't then turn around and sell that again because it's not my photo i am just purchasing the rights to use the photo not to resell the photo you own the photo 
you can sell the use rights to someone else if you've decided to do that. And so, but you may say, well, Stephen, how am I supposed to prove that you haven't done X, Y, and Z with the photo and you've resold it on me? How do I, have, how do I maintain control? That's a great question. So one of the things that you can do is put in what's known as a watermark. So let me pull up on my, my, on some of my photos where I have a watermark. So give me a moment here as I pull it up. So a watermark is where you put like a logo or a name that's embedded into the image itself. It becomes part of the photo. It's sort of like, uh, we don't really see this much anymore, but paper, at least quality paper, has a watermark in it that would often tell you who manufactured the paper. So that would be a way to prove that you having, it's a way of marketing that particular paper and you would, uh, if you produced it, it helps market your company, right? It's a way of advertising. But you can also watermark a paper to show that this is the official stationery of, let's say, the President of the United States or the official corporate president of a corporation. That it's a, a way of trying to pr prove that whether a document is original or not. Now, we use stamps today. But in the ancient world, they would also use uh, rings, or like a, the king would have a particular ring or a particular stamp. They would pour wax on the document and then they would stamp it. And then they would know, well, this really came from the king, right? It wasn't just some Joe down the road who wanted me to do something. I was getting an order from the king because there is the king's seal. Well, we can do the same thing with a photo where we can mark the photo to prove uh, levels of ownership. So let me pull up uh, a watermark here. This isn't the best indication of a watermark, but I figured I would just bring it up to your attention. So here I have, let's blow it up a little bit more so you can see it a little bit better. It's going to get a little grainy because I downsampled it. Here I am with a woodchuck that I caught and that I have in a net. And if you look in the right hand side, it's a little blurry because I blew the image up because it's a very small, it was a very small photo. But I have in the right hand side here, Wildlife Control Consultant, comma, LLC. That's a watermark. Now people can say, well, you know, someone can just simply crop that off. You're absolutely correct. They could. But it's another step that they would have to take for an image that's already small to begin with. So when we're looking at watermarks, it's a way of also when someone's using your, your photo, they know that this actually belongs to you, or in this case belongs to me. If someone else was going to use this photo, they would have my watermark with it. Let me give another illustration of a maybe perhaps a better watermark. Here's one here that I have of deer. This one obviously is a larger photo, so when I blow it up, notice how I have copyright, wildlife control consultants, a photo of some deer out in front of someone's house. There you go. Now, there are different ways to do these watermarks that make it even harder. Like you can have the watermark going through the image diagonally. You can adjust its opacity. In other words, this, this is at a 100% opacity, but you can make it so it's kind of see-through. So maybe it's only 50%. So it looks like a shadow, a very grainy wildlife control consultant. So you can see the image behind it, but it's going to be very hard to sort of extract that from the image. If I have that wildlife control consultant, diagonally through the image, how is someone going to just simply crop that out? They're not going to be able to crop that out. So what this means is that this is a way for you to leverage 
the photos that you take in the field. Now, I think a lot of wildlife control operators, unfortunately, don't take photos in the field. Now, there's probably a variety of reasons for that. Perhaps they're busy, they're unoccupied, it's just one more thing they have to do. They're too busy, you know, hustling out there, getting more, more money, because it's a very time-intensive business. The challenge, however, is, is that you need photos at least for your website and for your own marketing material. I've mentioned this multiple times through my various podcasts. But there's also a way for you to generate revenue from the images that you take and you don't really lose anything. It can actually be a way of marketing your business. You say, well, Stephen, I'm not a photographer, blah, blah, blah. Now I'll have a presentation perhaps down the road on how to take better photos. But let me be blunt. I mean, this is an iPhone, I believe 12, might be a 13. I think we're up to 14 now, but because this is one generation old. And for the last five years or so, and this and this also applies for your Samsung type cameras, your uh, Droid, your Droid phones, the cell phone cameras of today. You know, not by today, I mean like the last five years, maybe seven years. They're taking exceptional photos. There is really, if you're carrying a cell phone with you, there is really no reason that you can't take. 70% of the photos that need to be taken with just this. Now, there are going to be situations where you need a higher quality camera, things like low light, things are more distant. But the fact of the matter is there is a boatload of photos that you can take with simply a cell phone. Okay, And the cell phone quality is incredible. So it's not the equipment that's the holdback here. It's the willingness to use it and the willingness to organize your photos in a, in a manner such that you can find them again to sell. Now you may say, well, Stephen, I, I don't know how to put in a watermark. How, how do I do it? How do I do it? How do I go about selling some of my photos or even marking them so that if I put them up on my website, they don't get taken? Well, no one can guarantee whether your photos will be taken or not off the web. Again, the watermark adds another level of difficulty in doing that. Now, I found some of my photos uh, used on other websites without my permission. Now, I'm willing to sell my photo, uh, sell use rights to my photos, but people don't ask me for those, right? But I've had photos of mine used. Let me give an illustration of one here. And I'm not trying to throw these people under the bus. I, I It's okay, it's a university. But that this photo here, let me kind of blow this up a little bit more for you. This photo here, is a shrunk version of one of the photos that I have uh, that I have of, of some vole damage. And you can see this is a beautiful spot. It has, I took this photo, uh, University of Nebraska Lincoln. This was a an issue, I think it was over in the in the East Campus where I found this particular damage if memory serves. But now notice how it's credited here. It's icwdm.org, USDA Wildlife Services. Well, Wildlife Services did not make this photo. <laughs> okay, this was this was my this was my photo, uh, and I'm okay, and I'm okay with it. But I've had vol I've had another vol image vol damage image used in a commercial site, right? And I did have a problem with that. I was more than happy to sell them use rights, but they just simply decided to take it down. People think that just because a photo is part of a university that you have the right to grab it. You don't, right? You have to get permission to, to do that. But if I'd have watermarked this, this photo, then they would have known to come directly to me, okay? So at least it also gives advertising, because right now it's advertising the icwdm.org site, the site that I used to be a webmaster for, and USDA Wildlife Services, why they're on there. I've, I think there was just probably some miscommunication somewhere. The same thing can happen to you. and But on a positive spin, let me not make this so negative, let me make this more positive, is that when you watermark your photos, you are able to market and advertise your company. And in a, in a world where it is hard enough to get your name out there and to be known, 
what better way to get free advertising is to have your watermark on photos that may be found in environments that you're not already in right so the problem with marketing you know the one person said i you know 80 80% of my marketing budget is wasted i just don't know which 80% well that's sort of tongue in cheek but if you're putting out photos out into the into the world and you're selling the use rights you have photos on your website and they're watermarked now your name can be out there in different contexts and you've made a little bit of money off the photos you sold use rights to okay it's just throwing that out there now so what are some of the ways you can do a watermark well this is a particular program that i was turned on to by uh, a friend of mine oh probably seven eight years ago if memory serves it's called i watermark now it comes in a format that's suitable for droid phones and for windows and for iPhones. I have, I believe it's the iWatermark Pro version. And basically what it is, it's a program where you bring in a photo from that you've taken with your cell phone. You have some functionality in terms of what kind of a watermark you want to put on it. And you then position the watermark on your photo and then export it. And now you have a photo with a watermark on it. It's easy peasy, right? It's incredibly easy. Yeah, are there some steps with it? Well, while you're watching TV, you could be watermarking your best your best photos. And it doesn't damage your original because you're it's creating a copy of your original that you would then watermark. And then that could be photos that you could then sell or put out there for people to try to, you know, to use if you wanted to use them. I know of a company in the UK, they got so many requests for photos. What they did is they turned around and they basically made a web page with about, I think, 30 photos or so, 30 photos that they're just saying, have at it, you can use it, just give us acknowledgement. And I believe their photo, if memory serves, their photos have been, uh, watermarked so they just turned it around so look we don't want we're not looking to, to get any money on this we've had so many requests but it's a way for again for that particular company their name because they sell products to have their name out there i'm shocked as someone who does a, a lot of presentations i am regularly shocked at how difficult it is to get photos from manufacturers of products absolutely blows my mind and because one of the things I am desperately trying to do in my PowerPoints is I'm trying to get to a place where every single image on my PowerPoints I either own or I have permission to use now I haven't reached perfection there yet but I am very very close and I think on some PowerPoints, I have 100%, but the most, there's usually a, a one or two, usually less than five that I just can't get. I either can't create it or I haven't been able to find it where I could get permission. And a lot of times it's a manufactured product. Now, the only advantage is, of course, is many, manufactured, many manufacturers don't care because they're glad to have their, their photo out there of their particular product. But I do try to reach out to companies and get permission to get their photos. But it's amazing at how hard this is. And I think this is particularly the case also in a lot of wildlife control products. Like if you have a trap or you're selling a bait or you're selling whatever it is related to wildlife control, why do you wanna make it hard for people to have photos of your product? It doesn't make any sense to me. Because that just helps because when I'm teaching wildlife control operators in my day job, don't you want them to see your product and have me talk about it? Uh, wouldn't that make more sales? I, I talked to one trap manufacturer. He said, he said You're, you alone have been responsible for increasing my sales. That's me. Now, I don't make any money off of his product. I don't make a dime off of this product, okay?
But because I talk about his product, because I, I love his trap, that he has sold a lot of traps because of what I've done. And so do you think other people are in the same position? I'm not the only trainer in wildlife control. There's the, your pest control trainers out there and all kinds of trainers. Why do you want to make this hard, right? Why do you want to make it hard for people to get a hold of your photos? So, all right, enough preaching there. I hope you got the point. Anyways, this eye watermark is a way for you to have to do the watermarking on your cell phone and have your images watermarked in that particular way. Are there any other options? For those of you that have Windows, you can see this particular format here. So this is iWatermark Pro. Here the price is uh, listed as $20, $20, okay? So look at the various things that you can do with it, just so that you know. Of course, your watermark can be text, you can arc the text, you can make a bitmap graphic, you can make a vector graphic, a borderline graphic, you can use a signature and lines and stego marks and custom filters. Some, a lot of these functionalities I don't use, but you're certainly willing to play with them. Other types of features is it's for iPhone, Windows, Droid. Okay, we've already mentioned that. It can deal with the metadata that's the uh, file that attaches to your particular photo that's not normally visible you have to pull up you know like a photo editing software like photoshop or bridge bridge is not an editing program but it's a file manipulation program where you can see this metadata right one of the things i like about why watermark is you can tell it to strip out the location uh, metadata. So when you take it with a cell phone, remember, and I talked about this in the previous podcast, when you take a picture with a cell phone, the location data is embedded into the image. Well, if you're taking it of someone's house, you don't want that house to be found, right? So when you're using an eye watermark, you can tell it to strip away that location data. So that way, if someone downloads the photo and looks at it, you can't see the location data. My understanding is, and again, anybody out there who knows differently, my understanding is that when you put photos up on Facebook, Facebook strips away the location data as well, unless you manually add it, right? And so that's a way of helping protect people's privacy to a certain degree. And you'd want it, especially if you're dealing with someone's famous house, the last thing they wanna see is their house up on your on your website okay so definitely keep that in mind so this is definitely a photo i mean a a watermarking program that i that i am particularly fond of and it's something that you can do on your own but what if you say like steven i've got so many photos just just no way i can do all that well then let me give you uh, access let me talk about another program out there and of course that would be a photo editing program such as Photoshop. Now I'm just talking about Photoshop simply because it's the big dog in the industry. It's not the only photo editing program and I'm not suggesting that it is, okay? I'm just simply, this is one that I'm familiar with and certainly one that a lot of people are knowledgeable about, but I just wanna point out that with Photoshop, you can also do watermarks in a variety of different ways. And so let me try to uh, pull up a, pull up an image here, let's see, uh, and have that for you. All right, here we go. Let's go with, uh, let me use that. It's kind of an ugly photo, let me use that. Okay, so with, with Photoshop, you can then put in a text box if you wish. Here we have a text box. I can put a text box in here and I can just simply type in, you know, Stephen Van Tassel 2022. And you can put in a copyright symbol if you wish and you can then move, move this, in, this portion around. Oh, let me see how, why won't it let me move? There we go. We can move this around a little bit. I can then turn it through there. And there's different ways to manipulate the font. I can change the font size if I want to. Looks like I'm having a little bit of memory problems here, but uh, that's something that we can certainly look at here. And so there's a variety of things that you can do with this 
with this particular uh, program. I mean, the, the sky is essentially essentially the limit if you want to make do some incredible do some incredible things with it, right? So we can make the font bigger, smaller. There's diff different ways we can adjust we can adjust that here. So you have a lot again a lot of that functionality, and then you embed that into the image itself. You can also insert basically an image and so I don't think I still have that particular brush stroke let me see if I still have it available but you can actually use a brush stroke with a logo let's say you have a particular logo for your for your image and you can use that particular tool so and that's something else that you can you can do as well and there's a way to put then you can just simply stamp that on different parts of your photo itself and I'm just trying to see if I still have it activated on my my uh, Photoshop here but I'm not seeing it so it looks like I have not kept it active because I haven't used this in, in some time so think about watermarking your photos if you're nervous about selling them i like i said i'm looking for photos to sell so i have a personal vested interest in you doing this but if not if you're not going to sell your sell the use rights to your photos remember there's a difference between ownership rights and use rights if you're not going to do that at least watermark your images so you can help protect your ownership of images when you're putting them up on your website or you're using them in various publications whatever the case may be and that'll get your name out or your company name out farther and, and be advertising without costing you a dime and so now if you're saying Stephen I have so many images I don't have time to put in a watermark and all these definitely reach out to me we would love to, uh, we, we can be hired to put in a watermark on your photos for you and work out an arrangement for that. You can reach me, of course, at wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com, wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com. And I would love to uh, correspond with you about that. If you have images that you would like, that you would be interested in selling use rights to, uh, I am particularly looking for commensal rodent type photos. That commensal rodents would be house mouse, uh, deer mouse, Norway rat, roof rat. Uh, I'll even put in pack rat as well. I would be interested in talking about pack rat. And I'm also interested in some mole uh, photos and so you say well what do you want to see well i'm looking for damage what i call glamour shots glamour shot is a picture of the animal itself whether it's in its habitat i'm interested in nests i'm interested in signs scat tracks uh different types of sets and control methods so my uh it, it's pretty broad in terms of what uh, what i am looking for and so um <clears throat> and i am interested in doing that so I am grateful for those of you out there that have sold uh, some images uh, some use rights to me uh, I'm certainly grateful I don't know how, how many of you are actually listening but there's a, a few people that I've purchased uh, the use rights from and I'm very grateful for that it's been a big help so I am hoping that you can see this as another alternative revenue stream particularly those of you who are part-timers you may have more time to sort of take shots and you're looking for ways to raise your revenue stream uh, this is one way for you to break in and it's very very needed uh, in this particular case so i would hope that you would consider uh, doing that in the future well my name is Stephen Van Tassel. You've been listening to Living the Wildlife. Do take a few moments, if you would, to drop me a line at wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com. I would love to hear about your comments and thoughts and criticisms and suggestions for future shows. Tell me what you think. Uh, also, you can do subscribe to our channel, of course. We'd love to have you do that. And if you're looking to just get vertebrate pest control information you can definitely subscribe to my channel through rumble of course lastly uh, we would love to get ideas from you about future shows otherwise as i've said multiple times before i'm just going to talk about what interests 
me. So uh, otherwise, stay tuned. Do take a few moments, if you would, to think about how you're going to plan your time off for this holiday season. Use this as an opportunity to refresh the time with your family, your spouse, loved ones. Sometimes being self-employment, you need to be sure you take some time and give them full-on attention uh, during this particular holiday season as we're coming up to Thanksgiving and, of course, the Christmas holiday season as well. So, again, you've been listening to Living the Wildlife. Why do we call it Living the Wildlife? Well, because we want you to live the wildlife, not be the wildlife. Take care, everybody.